Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here with Bob today, who has uh, very generously brought over a cool pistol for us to take a look at. This is a Rothsteyer Model 1907, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take it apart, and take it out to the range and do some shooting, and uh, learn all about it. It's a really neat pistol. Now, you were telling me there's some, some really interesting way they uh, actually issued this gun. Well, they... I, what I think is interesting is the cavalry usage of the Austrian cavalry. They were issued three of the pistols. Uh, and there were, uh, was a holster on the front of the horse with two of them, and then a, the one on their shoulder, on their hip, excuse me, and in, the, in this guy. In a well protected uh, protective holster. I'm sorry, I've never seen the, ho the, the horse pistol holsters. But as I what I was told was is that the standard procedure was is to have all three of the guns loaded, charged. Anyway, in the in the advance into a into a fight, the cavalry would draw the far holster, to draw the pistol out of the far holster, and they would go into the battle. When the gun was empty, they would reholster it and pull the other. Whole, uh, the other Roth tire out of the ne other next holster and fight with it. If their horse wasn't shot out from under them, they would put it back into the holster and draw the third one. But in many cases, they knew the horse or themselves would be shot out, and they kept the one uh, the one holster uh, that they had on their body for their last weapon of, of, of fighting. And the, the last we uh, weapon, the holster, has a magazine pouch to the rear, and I believe it will hold six fully loaded stripper clips full of ammunition. The stripper clip is also, it's, they're not easy to come by. In fact, they're extremely hard to come by because but it's a really cool design where it's got this thumb charger on it as well. So you load up all your all your cartridges in here, and when you go to load it, you can set this in the gun and then push on this little follower to to strip all the rounds in for you nice and smooth, instead of having to push on the top cartridge and, right. and fiddle them in. So we'll give this a try when we're out of the range. Yes. So all right. So uh, let's go in and take a little closer look at exactly how this gun works. There's a lot of weirdness to it. Uh, first of all, I do want to point out these were made by two different factories. Uh, they were made by Steyr, and this particular one is a Steyr gun. They were also made by FEG in Hungary. Total, there were about uh, 80,000 of these made between 1907 and 1914. Um, and they were a standard issue pistol for the Austrian cavalry and also the Austrian uh, army in general. Um, officers had these. So, in order to disassemble this, the first thing we're going to do is slide out this little pivoting wedge at the front. So that comes out and then we have a, uh, a bushing at the front that comes out. Now if this is too sticky, the way you can get it out is by pulling the bolt back and letting it go forward. But this one's nice and clean and it is coming out here without any trouble. There we go. barrel comes out, and then in order to get the slide out, we have to unscrew this uh, rear cap, and there is a little bayonet type clip right here. When I push that down, it allows me to unthread this. Now I want to take some of the spring tension off before I completely unscrew it. Take it to you there. Drop that down. Now I can unscrew it the rest of the way. And because of the mainspring, this will jump forward a bit when I. There we go. Do that. So this is our firing pin spring, which comes out the back. And then this is the firing pin itself. This is a very chunky, heavy duty, well made firing pin. Then coming out the front. We have the slide assembly here and the recoil spring and its plunger. Um, incredibly intricate machining. I mean, this is frankly 
insane. Uh, to make these today would be just ludicrously expensive. Now, to get a little deeper into the frame here, I'm going to take the grip panel off. This is a removable side plate. We have to pull the front up and it lifts off like so. There we go. So this is just uh, basically just to allow access to the inside of the gun because we also have this magazine assembly. This gun, it, as you can see, the bottom of the frame is solid. It's got a big old lanyard loop at the bottom. And this is fed by stripper clips and it has an integral magazine, which we can pull out, just lift up on this side, and there it goes. All right, well, we've got this disassembled. Let's take a look at a couple other interesting aspects to it. First of all, here's a really good example of a multifunction component. We have this plunger on the end of the recoil spring. Now, the side plate of the gun here fits in like this. You can see there's a hole on the front of that, and this recoil spring plunger fits in there. So we'll put the spring into its area down on the, the bottom of the frame and see how it comes through. So when this side plate is in, that plunger acts as a securing pin to prevent the side plate from coming off. And you can see it's also the trigger return spring. So talk about getting a lot done with one little component there. Um, the people who designed this pistol may not have had the experience to know exactly what mechanisms would work best, but they were extremely clever. Um, another example of that. All right, so on the side of the slide here, we have this little pivoting arm. And this has a, a couple of functions, two different functions. Um, first of all, what we can see is that when the firing pin is forward and extending out of the bolt face, this little arm is stuck out. It extends outside the slide. When we move the firing pin back a little bit, it can retract all the way into the slide. Now there is a little cutout, a little semicircular cutout in the frame of the pistol, right down here. I don't know if we can see it or not, but it's in there, such that this little arm can only extend out of the slide when the slide is fully forward and in battery. And that's doing two things in there. Um, first of all, it's actually sort of acting as a hesitation lock. Uh, force on uh, this little lobe into the frame helps prevent the barrel from recoiling for a short time. It's also acting as a safety mechanism so that if the slide is not fully in battery, the firing pin can't come forward and the gun can't fire out of battery. So Now let's take a look at the locking mechanism of the, the Roth Steyr here. As you can see, this is a rotating barrel. Uh, there's nothing linear on the barrel here, we just have these two sets of lugs. The rear set of lugs are what actually lock the, the gun, the action. The front set of lugs are there to run in a separate set of cams and force the barrel to rotate. So, we have two little cutouts in the front of the slide, and those actually allow you to see the locking lugs. So right there, the barrel is rotated into its locked position, and as I, un, un, uh, as I rotate the barrel, you can see those lugs move. And when I've rotated it just about 90 degrees, it unlocks and can move forward. Uh, this is actually more travel than just about any other rotating barrel pistol out there, uh, a full 90 degrees of rotation. Now you'll notice that there's nothing up here. The barrel's all the way back against the bolt face, and there's nothing left up here to actuate these two lugs. We have this incredibly detailed machining that uh, sits in the front of the frame and it has, oops, it has two cammed grooves in there and that's what the front of the, the front two lugs on the barrel operate in. So these go in like that and simply rotate. So as recoil pulls this back, those two angled surfaces on the, the lugs force it to rotate. 
And we'll put this all together. That is what we have going on inside the pistol. So if you look at the front, you can see that when I pull the slide back, the barrel is rotating. And that's what happens when you fire. This piece is fixed in the frame. The rest of this entire slide assembly comes backward. Comes backward, rotates the barrel, unlocks, and then it can travel about this far backward. And then when it comes forward, the bolt face picks up a new cartridge, locks it in, or pushes it into the chamber, and then rotates the barrel until the whole thing is locked. All right, so these were used, uh, they were an official Austrian military pistol in the First World War, and they did see use with uh, like police units uh, all the way through the end of the Second World War, because if they are around, you might as well make use of them, free up modern production pistols for the frontline troops. Now there are some intricacies, some kind of weirdness to the firing mechanism on this. Some people, uh, you can describe it as a double action, and it sort of is, with the exception that once you've Pull the trigger, you have to manually recock the gun before it'll fire again. And in this way, actually, the firing system is very similar to that of a Glock that would follow many decades later. So at the back, there is a, a, a the tail of the firing pin is visible. Then when we cock the gun, you can see it now sticks out about a quarter inch. That means that the round is, well, it doesn't necessarily mean a round is chambered, it means the, the striker is halfway cocked. When we pull the trigger, it'll fire. And when we do pull the trigger, what you can see is that it will actually pull this a little bit farther out, again, like a Glock, uh, pulls the striker all the way back to full travel, and then releases it. Now, if I try to pull the trigger again, it does nothing because the firing pin is all the way forward. In order to fire it again, I have to manually cock it, and that, that brings the striker back halfway. Now I can pull the trigger and fire. Um, as Bob mentioned, this was because this was intended as a cavalry gun, and they wanted a safety mechanism like a double action revolver, a very heavy trigger pull, which this has. All right, so we have the gun apart, so you can see the trigger mechanism here. We have the firing pin, and you can just see the firing pin impinging on this main sear back here. So the first step in this is you have to manually cock the gun. When you do that, it's going to snap back like that. And now the tail of our firing pin is behind the sear. Now, when we pull the trigger, you can see these like 85 little parts and they're all camming together. This is what's going to snap down. So this is, you can see the back sear here moving and pulling the firing pin or the striker a little farther back, farther, 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 safety catch and right there, it fires. Allows the firing pin to go all the way forward. Now we didn't have spring tension on it, so it just sat there. But when you pull it all the way back in, it pulls the firing pin back just a little bit. Let's try that again. Just like that. All right, so we're out at the range with the Steyr 1907. Now the stripper clips that these use are a bit unusual. They actually have a little metal thumb follower on them. And uh, these work really well. Uh, this has a 10 round magazine, we're just putting 9 in for now. But what we do is slide this clip into its charger guide. Push it down like that, and when I pull the clip out, it automatically chambers the first round. Like that. Now the trigger pull, as we mentioned on this, is really heavy. Uh, but it's also a fairly heavy gun. You can see it's ejecting pretty much just straight up and back, which is really convenient for finding brass. Um, recoil is fairly light. It's 8 millimeter Steyr caliber, which is a pretty wimpy little, you know, early European cartridge. Um, and it's a fairly heavy pistol, which helps damp everything down. However, the, mu the line of the bore is fairly high above your hand, so it does actually have more flip than you would expect. All in all, it's a really comfortable gun. Uh, the ergonomics of the grip are great. Uh, I can certainly see myself 
charging on horseback, wildly firing one of these. That'd be pretty cool. And it locks open when it's empty or uh, when you have a malfunction. This time it's empty. And uh, you would then go ahead and pull out another stripper clip, reload it, and keep going. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you uh, learned something about the Steyr 1907. I'd like to thank Bob for generously letting us play with this. And uh, tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com for more cool old pistols.